Now let's take this and, and let's do the same math. Let's combine these two. Let's take the math from this one. Let's take the math from this one. And let's look at this one. This is a new uh, problem from a new, from. it's actually from the new 47 exam. It's, uh, it's the six, I believe it's the six, the new 65 MTEL. So the, the, the 47 exam, MTEL 47. This is an exam for middle school and high school teachers. Uh, this is a problem from that exam. Uh, it's on the new MTEL 65. It's either 65 or 63. I think it's the 65. And they're taking the math and they're just, they're just using the same math, the same math that you're going to find on this problem and on this problem right here. And they're just up in, up in the ante a little bit, but it's the same math. Take a moment, read it to yourself. Take, take a moment now. Read this middle school, high school math problem real quick. Unpause. I'm going to highlight this one right here. And I'm going to circle the word diagram. Now, they give us a, a, it looks like a regular pentagon. And we're looking with a regular pentagon, um, some sort of pyramid. So it's not a triangular pyramid. Uh, it is a pentagon pyramid, I guess, three-dimensional shape. And this is a net, a net of a three-dimensional shape. So meaning I could take this net and we could fold it up. So I'm going to do my best job. I know it's not going to be, it's not going to be accurate, but I'm going to do my best job of drawing what this could look like if it was folded up. Is that right? And that's what you have to do in this one right here. You have to see that this is the net or two, a net is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. That is a terrible picture of this shape. Let me see. I want to try and do it again because I, I know that artistically I could do better than that. I mean, first, it all starts with the base, right? The, the base has to, has to be correct. So let's just get, I want to just, for myself, this is a personal goal. Personal, ah, uh, it's not that good. Uh, I'll try it one more time. Personal best now. Let's see. Da, da, da. A little better, good enough. All right, and I'll just see. Let me see if I, I use a, a draw with a straight line. Let's see if that makes the the visual just a a, a little bit better. Let's see. We got, and I'll, I'll use a different color too, just to just to lighten it up a little bit. Let's see. We got one. There we go. Two. That's that that looks better, right? Three. Yeah, that looks much better. That looking. That's looking. That's looking, I'm like almost as good as Khan Academy. <laughs> no, I'm not, but hey, this is how I'm doing it. And you have to do it too. You have to visualize that this is a two-dimensional representation of this. This is a net of this three-dimensional object. Is that right? Give me a thumbs up. Now, if we have this in our mind right here, there's other observations that we should that we should know. Um, first of all, uh, it says here the diagram shows a net of a right solid with a rectangular base. My, okay, I guess it basically said what I said. This is a net of this, this sh three-dimensional shape. And it says here, the, the height of the solid formed from the net can be computed. So we're trying to find the height. Uh, and the height would be, let's see, that would be the line that goes directly up the shape. Is that right? And I'll draw, I'll draw here that height there, that height. Let's see. Is uh, is going to be from the origin all the way up is going to be our, our is going to be our height of that shape. Is that right? So that's what we're trying to find the height, and it's looking for an expression that can represent the height of this shape. And you're going to notice I'm going to underline the word expression. The answer is an expression form, and when we saw in this last problem. We were looking for an expression of, you know, and the answer was an expression form too. Is that right? Give me a thumbs up. And when we looked at the answer of this one right here from that last problem, they were using the Pythagorean theorem in expression form. It was just kind of hard to visualize the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll go back to this one right here. And if we look at these expressions closely, we do kind of see the Pythagorean theorem here. Except the version that I'm seeing, it, we're, we're not seeing... Uh, a squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We're not seeing that. It looks like we're seeing a, a variation of this. 
So a variation of this could be something like, uh, let's just, let's just, let's just continue with the problem. We're going to look at a variation of this, but it's still the same math. So the next thing I got to do is this, I've got to match up the information here that in my three dimensional drawing to here. Now we, we have some information that's important. That's, and that's very helpful. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I'll start with a, it looks like a is going from a tip to the center. Is that right? A tip to the center. So just in theory, right? Just hypothetical theory. I'm just, let's just imagine right now that this is a right here then that would be the base of a potential triangle, right? So I'll just redraw it here. If I took a cross section of this and I called the, this from that outer tip, that point, it's the point here to the point here. And from this outer point of this uh, rectangular, uh, uh, sorry, not rectangular prism, this pentagon prism, from this point to the origin of this solid shape, we'll call A. And now this height, this height, we, I'm sorry, we don't know what the height is. That's what we're trying to find, but I'll call that height here H. That's, that's what we're trying to find, H. Uh, and I guess H here is going to be our, our B. Is that right? We have a right triangle here. That's that, that perpendicular line from the base to the height. So we're looking for a perpendicular height here. And we got this diagonal. Now, what's this diagonal? Now, this is a little hard to see if it's C or if it's E, but C is going from a point, an outer point, all the way up to the tip. So this actually here, this from the outer point all the way up, this is our C. So I'll write down here C. So let's, let's, uh, let's take this. Let me see if I can just clear it off a little bit. So let's just do this. And, and, and thinking about this right here, thinking about this, we get back to that pen here. So we have this one right here. We have that base and we have actually, they give us the hypotenuse now of this right here. They have the C and I guess we're trying to find the height. This is going to be B is going to be our, is going to be our height here. Okay. So if we follow this formula, we know that a squared plus B squared equals C squared. We know that we are given a squared. We don't know what B squared is. So I'll just call this the height. B is the height squared is equal to C squared. Oh, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Chewy down. I'm going to bring Chewy down. By the way, he's our co-host for these shows here. He's a very faithful friend. It's always good to have a friend during during times like this. But I'm going to put him down because he, uh, he wants to go down. All right. Get down. Get down, my trusty Steve. All right. Um, and... Uh, we're going to solve this. Now, we could do it a couple ways. I'm going to, I'll, I'll keep with uh, B squared is equal to C squared. Okay, we're trying to find B squared. I guess I could subtract the A squared from both sides, right? I mean, that's, that, would be the, that, would, that would be the basic math involved in a basic problem like this. And we would get B squared is equal to, um, we would get B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. So I'll just, I'll just, so we have here our, our B squared. I'll write it down here. B squared, I'll write down here. B squared is equal to uh, C squared minus A squared. But just like that basic math from, the, from all these basic problems, we're going to take the square root because we want to find the height of, we want to find the measure of B, our height. So I guess our B, which is our height here, is equal to the square root of C squared minus A squared. The answer here is A. You know, I feel like this is very similar to this one. The answers are written. It's using the Pythagorean theorem. The answers are in expression form. And it's very similar to this one too, except instead of um, solving, doing a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, we just did a variation of it. We did, we found out what b is, right? By doing uh, c squared minus a squared is equal to b squared. And then we took the square root of each one. And really, it all comes down to this one right here. Essentially, what we did was we did our, we, we in solving for the height here, uh, in solving for, for that height, I know this is flipped upside down, but this missing variable, we did our C squared, we subtracted the A squared from both sides to get our B squared, and then we did that square root 
on both sides, and we got that that our missing our height here, our b is equal to c squared minus a squared. You know, really, team, it's the same math. It's it's is the same math that's here. So this same math and this same this basic problem is the same math exists that's here. Now there's now maybe you didn't maybe you see that now, but you didn't see it when you first read the problem. And there are a lot of tri uh, pitfalls in a problem like this. Uh, I think one of the hardest things is teachers to take this net and get to this shape. And then when they get to that shape, accurately match up the right triangle that you're trying to form to form this basic relationship of a squared plus b squared equals c squared so that you can find your missing side. But the math is still the same. It's just maybe the skills in setting it up. But the math, a squared plus b squared plus c squared, is still the same. There's a lot of different reasons why B, C, and D are wrong, but I want you to start with this video and understand why A is right, okay? All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day, team. Uh, take care, bye-bye. Hi, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. This spring, Go Academy is turning all the workshops into webinars. This is designed to help teachers continue studying and getting ready for their exams and stay at home at a safe distance. These classes are gonna be covering the same material as a regular workshop. We're gonna do them in seven hours and they're held on Saturdays and Sundays in the morning from seven to 10.30 on Saturday and Sunday. These classes are geared for teachers that are gonna be studying April and taking their tests late April, May, and June. And we'll also be doing webinars throughout the summer. I encourage you to check out a webinar. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful.